Hi, this video is a continuation of the previous one where we are really developing our method of solving problems in quantum mechanics, these physical problems. Now, unlike classical mechanics where we are given you know, certain bodies in a certain system, we apply Newton's second law, F equals to MA, we uh, solve that equation, we get stuff like the velocity, acceleration, and the displacement. Quantum mechanics is not like that. Instead, we need to have a perceptive eye to identify these different cases where the potential and the energy takes different values. Okay, I say again that you know we know that the state of the system is characterized by the system's energy okay and really this system energy changes based on what the potential and what the energy of the particle is okay so today we're gonna look into that we already know the solutions of the second order differential equation given by this over here okay if the differential equation takes this form we know the solutions if the differential equation takes this form we know the solutions now the difference between the two as you can clearly see is that this is plus and this is minus okay but what is more vitally important is that for both of them the coefficient okay in front of the phi x okay is positive k squared and k squared now you might be asking at this point what happens to the potential what happens to the energy and then the h bar basically they're all contained inside this k squared over here so you know you might think about it as is that you know as long as i can write destroying this equation okay you know rearrange the, the, the potential and the energy to take one of these forms okay i can immediately write down the solutions the solution for this is um e to the i kx okay and minus and this one is e to the kx or e to the minus uh, kx and it's the linear combination of the two okay but the thing is that essentially we need to know or we need to develop a method on which solution we are going to use okay you can anticipate that we're gonna have the potential have the energy rearrange it and take one of these forms but how do we know really which solution we are going to use okay and today we're going to look into that so the objective is to identify different cases where V minus E is the same sign, okay, given the same potential. Okay, now this is really a statement that we need to take some time to think. Now, it's best that I can show it to you an example over here, okay, so this is a sample potential I sketched out, okay. Now, I would like to re-emphasize re again that the potentials that we're dealing with is a constant uh, given in a certain region. So, like it is over here, okay, except the harmonic oscillator. Okay, so minus infinity to x0 is given by x2, uh, x0 to x1 is given by v1, sorry, v2, v1, x1 to uh, x2 is v3, x and x3, v0, and x3 to infinity is v2. So the potential is constant, okay? But what we want to do is to identify the different cases, okay, where this is a, the same sign, okay? And, you know, this is the potential and this is the energy in the same potential and also in the same region. So immediately i'm going to graph out two energy values for you now remember the energy that we're dealing with is the energy of the particle they can form a continuous or a discrete spectrum we don't know but only the solutions will tell tell, tell us that but you know we know that the energy can take a certain range of values but compared to the potential there are different cases now energy let's say energy 2 okay energy 2 i will sketch it out as like this okay remember i can sketch the energy against the potential all right and energy one, I can sketch it against like that. Now, these are two separate cases. Now, they definitely look like two separate cases, but one way to convince you, okay, is that as we move energy one up, right, notice that energy one will change sign over here, okay? I hope you can see this point over here as well as over here. What, what changes sign? V minus E changes sign. So, in this place, we can see that V minus e okay it's going to be positive okay i should write it here sorry v minus e is going to be positive right the potential is higher okay than the energy okay yeah here the potential is higher than the energy but as we move up to e2 okay the energy is going to be higher than poten but the potential so this is going to change sign okay i couldn't think of a more mathematical rigorous way to write it but basically this is my idea so already we need to um separate these two cases okay now so what I would normally write is this, given the potential, we got, we know, we, we separate the energies, different values, okay, but what I can say is that for E2, okay, it's going to be more than, now this is going to be obvious, E2 is going to be more than V2, but, okay, now test your knowledge, what is going to be the bound over here, okay, remember, when they change sign, is we increase energy, 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 there's one change in sign, and that's going to occur at V3, can you see that? Now, this, at this portion, right, at this portion, x1, uh, x2, okay, the potential is higher than the energy, but as we increase the energy to, let's just say, E3, okay, E3 over here, this is, the energy is now going to be higher than, than, than the potential, so we cannot lump the solutions together. The reason for that is what we like to call a qualitative analysis. Now, if you watch my video on the bound and unbound states, you will know something like that, all right? 
if the energy is higher than the potential, the motion of the particle is going to be oscillating. Okay, don't be too concerned on what the motion is really all about. Okay, but just know it's oscillating and it's going to be decaying when it's lower than the potential and oscillating again. Right? If the energy is higher than the potential, it's going to be oscillating all the way. Okay, and for this case, let's see whether we can sketch it out. Decaying, okay, and it's going to be oscillating, decaying again, oscillating, and decaying again. Because at these two regions, the energy is higher than the potential. So, as you can already see, we can't exactly write the solutions to the differential equation, to the Schrodinger equation together for these two energy values because one of them is oscillating throughout and the other one is oscillating, decay, and then oscillating. So that is what we need to pay careful attention of, identifying the different cases where E minus V is of the same sign. Right? Now, so okay, let's do E1. Okay, what can we say about E1? E1, now firstly, I'll just I'll do the upper bound for you. It's gonna be less than V2, right? What is gonna be the lower bound? You wanna take a look at it, it's gonna be V1. Okay, V1. We move the energy lower, the energy is now gonna be this one over here, but when this occurs, it's gonna be decaying all the way to this point over here. I like E1. Uh, let's just say E0. Right? So this is really what we need to do, identify the different cases. Now, once we do that, we need to, again, use our perceptive eye okay, to identify the different cases, which I like to say maybe the objective two, objective two, okay, identify when V changes, right? And this is really the solution that we're going to do right now. So. Let's just take, um, let's just say e, uh, E2, okay? So for this case, right, for E2, now just write it here. So V2 uh, is gonna be less than E2. Sorry, uh, V2 is less than E2, but is E2 is less than V3. The solutions, okay, I normally write it as like that, phi x, but they're gonna be equal to uh, uh, a set of solutions, okay? Because as we can see, these solutions over here, and these solutions over here, and these solutions over here are all different because the potential changes, all right? Because of the potential changes. Um, actually, to be more exact, it's down here, down here, and down here, down here. But let's just assume that this goes throughout like that, right? So the energy value E2 is like that, okay? The potential is now given by something like that, okay? And we can see that this energy value is above the potential. We will have a solution which we will call as phi1, okay, equal to something. The proper domain, phi2, Okay, is equals to something and phi 3 is equal to something, right? Now for phi 1, okay, phi 1 is this solution over here. Okay, what can I say about the domain of x? I can say that x is within minus infinity, okay, to x1. Now for phi 2, phi 2, the domain is from here to here. So basically x is between x1 to x2. Sorry, x1 to x2 and then phi 3, you can, you know, uh, do it yourself again and just look at it. It's none other than x2 to infinity. Okay, so that is what we need to do. Now how are we going to link this to this? Okay, we're going to solve the, the problems that we have, right? But basically today's is about briefing you on how we identify the different cases. Two steps, okay, two objectives that we need to meet. First, identify where, you know, V minus E is of the same sign and then we need to identify really when the potential changes because this would give us the solution for a certain energy value at a certain range, okay, but the solution itself, we need to write it accordingly to when the potential changes, okay, and we see that in the next lesson. How are we going to do that, okay? Thanks.